This is Jared Horak, and this is my second road to the 2023 Kentucky Oaks Points Race Recap video. In my first recap video, I covered multiple races, beginning with the Pocahontas Stakes at Churchill Downs. That was the first points race last September. Then I went all the way through the Santa Ynez Stakes at Santa Anita Park on January 8th of 2023. Now, in this video, I'll cover the next block of Oaks Points races, beginning with the Biasanda Stakes at Aqueduct on, on January 14th, and I'll go straight through the Honeybee Stakes at Oaklawn Park on February 25th. If you want to check out all of my Oaks and Derby analysis videos uh, on the road to the Derby and Oaks, I'll go over to my YouTube channel. Each week that they run a points race, I cover it in video format. I give out my tough choice and wagering strategies. So check out those videos each week on my YouTube channel. Now we're going to get into the uh, recap of of beginning with the Busanda Stakes. And that was on January 14th at Aqueduct. It was a mile and an eighth on a good track. And Ocult for trainer Chad Brown was the comfortable winner in this race. Uh, she was my top choice. It was a short field. Uh, she had the tactical edge here and she had a lot of upside and, and she lived up to that potential in this race. She won by almost four lengths. Uh, it was short field. Probably not a lot of not a lot of talent behind her, uh, but she ran a decent race here. She's lightly raced. She's got plenty of upside. Uh, they, uh, 154.78 was the final time, but she's already already has a stakes win at the Oaks distance. And I like her tactical speed and she should continue to get better. A silver bullet day stakes at fairgrounds on January 21st. It was a match race between two stable mates for trainer Brad Cox, the alleys look and chop chop. Now, Chop Chop was one that was highly regarded as a two-year-old filly. She was second by a nose behind two-year-old filly champion Wonder Wheel in the Alcibiades, and she was the only closer making up any ground that day. And then in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies, they made her the favorite, and she ended up never getting involved, had a wide trip, and that was a throwout race. And now she made her three-year-old debut in this race, and it was, I said it was a match race. The Alley's look had the tactical edge early, but Chop Chop was sitting a good stalking trip, they hooked up into the stretch. Chop Chop had the length of that long fairground stretch to get by her stablemate, but she couldn't do it. And the top two were more than 13 lengths clear of the show finisher. So it was a solid effort from both of those Brad Cox fillies, but Chop Chop was a bit disappointing. She had no excuses not being able to get by her stablemate that day. In the Martha Washington Stakes at Oakland Park on January 28th, it was a mile and a 16th on a wet fast track and wet paint rallied from off the pace. This was another Brad Cox trainee, and she was impressive from off the pace under Flavian Pratt. And this Godolphin runner, uh, she just had finished full of run and uh, was winning, uh, going away at the end. Defining purpose was chasing the pace, and then she led, couldn't hold the lead, and then 27 to 1 long shot taxed out finished defining purpose for that runner-up spot. But this one was all about wet paint, uh, good effort. I don't think the mile and an eighth longer distance of the Oaks is going to cause her any troubles. She's just one that if she can get some pace help, she can certainly finish. And we know she really likes a wet track. Uh, Faza was the winner of the Las Virginas Stakes at San Anita Park on January 28th. The only problem is she did not pick up any Oaks points, is, points because trainer Bob Baffert, runners from his stable, are ineligible to earn Oaks and Derby points. Uh, so horse, horses will need to move out of his barn by January 28th if, uh, to earn uh, Oaks points and get into those races, uh, Oaks and Derby, in the future. Uh, but Faisal's just been very solid. She hasn't lost, and she's one that has good tactical speed, and she, and she really likes to try hard to the end. Nothing flashy about her, uh, but she just gets the job done, and she and she likes to fight to the end. And she fought off uh, Pride of the Nile here uh, to win by a half length, and then she did the same thing. Uh, to that filly in the uh, Starlet Stakes last year at Los Alamitos, where Faza and Pride of the Nile hooked up, and Faza just did get the job done. So she seems to have a Pride of the Nile's number. And then uh, Justique, a uh, highly regarded filly for John Sheriff, she rallied to finish third. The problem with her is she's best as a late-running sprinter, or so it seems so far, because in her two route races, she just didn't have that electric turn of foot uh, like she has shown in her sprint races. Now, the forward gal stakes at Gulfstream Park on February 4th. This was a sprint race, seven furlongs, and red carpet ready. Uh, it's now three for three after an easy win here. Uh, she's one that really has good early pressing speed, and she had a good outer post here, and she was just able to dominate this race. And uh, the thing with her is we just don't know how far she wants to go at this point. Uh, she, all her races have been sprints around one turn, 
Uh, this one was seven furlongs, so we know she can go that far. Um, she's going to run in, in the Devona Dale a one-turn mile next, so we still won't know if she can go two turns until she gets later on into the spring. Uh, but Red Carpet Ready, very good sprinter, and, and she's she's a, a quality filly. And she beat some decent horses in here. Undervalued asset for trainer Chad Brown and atomically for trainer Todd Pletcher were second and third. In the Suncoast Stakes, now this is a race that it looked like one of two horses on paper were going to win. Either your two-year-old filly champion Wonder Wheel or uh, Julia Shining, a highly regarded Todd Pletcher trainee, Malathot sister. You just figure one of those two was probably going to get the job done here, uh, but that was not to be because a 38 to 1 long shot, Dreaming of Snow, was able to get out there, control the pace, and she just kept on going. And she held off Wonder Wheel, uh, and Wonder Wheel was 1 to 2 in this race. Uh, and Wonder Wheel had every chance to get by, she just couldn't do it. She finished a neck. Uh, behind the winner, and then Julia Shine, Shining rallied from off the pace. She was grinding away in the stretch, and she finished a solid third, and that was her first career loss. Now, unpacking all this uh, from this race, the Dreaming of Snow is going to need to prove that she can run against this kind again if she faces any kind of pace pressure. Or for Wonder Wheel, she was your best two-year-old filly horse. We're just going to have to figure out, uh, give her maybe one more chance. Has she improved at all from age two to three? She did start early on last year, just not sure she has progressed. Uh, as for Julia Shining, she's probably the horse she won out of this race. She was very lightly raced. A mile and 40 yards was just too short for her. She went to mile and an eighth or even longer probably because she won the Demoiselle at a mile and an eighth. She, she's just getting warmed up at this distance, and it was her first start. And look for her to improve uh, as we continue to go this year in, in these longer races, especially at a mile and an eighth or longer. In the UAE Oaks, uh, that was at a Maidan race course in Dubai on February 17th. And we had a U.S. shipper there for trainer Doug O'Neill, Amy Please. And Amy Please was out there controlling the pace. Uh, but the local hope, uh, Mimi Kakushi, who was a solid runner uh, in Dubai, uh, she was just too much uh, for Amy Please in the late going. And she got past that one. Those two dominated. I don't know if they're going to come here with Mimi Kakushi for the Oaks. We'll have to see. And Amy Please for trainer Doug O'Neill. It was a Southern California shipper, and, and she had really been a turf horse uh, prior to this uh, solid enough effort. The Rachel Alexandra Stakes, uh, this one was one uh, that, that may have been one of the better preps so far. February 18th, that one was run at the fairgrounds, uh, and we were expecting Hoosier Philly uh, to be the big winner here. And even Chop Chop, I mentioned that one from the Silver Bullet Day, she was in this race as well. Uh, you had Miracle out there setting the pace for trainer Todd Pletcher, but pretty mischievous, who was tracking the pace, and the pace was slow. After that opening quarter in 25 and change, uh, you just kind of knew that, that those front runners were going to hang around. It was only a six-horse field, and Miracle was setting the pace, and pretty mischievous was stalking the pace, and those two just dominated. The closers weren't able to get involved in, in this race. Hoosier Philly did not have a great start, and that really cost her in this spot because without any pace help in front of her, she wasn't able to make up any ground, and pretty mischievous was able to get the job done and turn the tables on Hoosier Philly, and Hoosier Philly had defeated her uh, in the Goldenrod last year. But pretty mischievous, solid effort here. But I think Pace had something to do with it, and Miracle was able to finish second, and Hoosier Philly uh, was third, no threat to the top two. Uh, I think she deserves another chance in a more honestly run race. Uh, the Honey Bee will be the final race that I'll cover here, and February 25th at Oakland Park. And wet paint, we mentioned that one from the Martha Washington. Again, she caught a wet track. It was a wet, fast track that day. This time, it was a sloppy track. It didn't matter. She rallied from 11th place, and she won going away uh, again, just like she did in the Martha Washington. So it was deja vu all over again, and she was able to catch Condensation, who got out there and set the pace and had a couple length lead in the stretch. But wet paint uh, under Flavian Pratt was just waiting for running room, split horses, uh, found her best stride in the stretch and one going away. As I said, distance is, is her friend for sure. Uh, it's just a question of, is she going to be as effective on fast tracks in the future? We'll have to see how all that plays out. But she looked good in here, winning over condensation uh, for trainer Brad Cox, uh, Flavian Pratt, uh, and Godolphin Stables. So wet paint, certainly one you want to look at on the road to the Oaks. Uh, so now the Oaks um, series will begin, uh, will continue as we keep on the road to the Oaks, uh, we have the Santa uh, Isabel Stakes at Santa Anita Park this week uh, for March 4th, along with the Devona Dale of the Busher from Aqueduct, the Cincinnati Trophy. 
they got big races like the Fairground Oaks uh, and the Ashland coming up later this spring. Uh, so the Oaks Trail is really starting to heat up now. And we're going to start to learn more about these fillies as the races uh, have more points attached and we get into these longer mile and eighth races. Uh, so again, check out my YouTube channel for all these Oaks and Derby points races. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races. <music>